On this episode of Kid in the Candy Store, I'm searching for the most amazing ways to take the cake. From cake you can eat off of a stick. This and a glass of milk <laughs> to die for. To the deep fried cupcake sundae. God is heaven on earth. To three feet of cake cooked over an open fire. And to top it all off, these cream filled coconut crusted classics. So join me, the Kid in the Candy Store, as we find fun and original ways to take the cake. I'm in Davis Square in Somerville, Massachusetts, just a stone's throw from Harvard and MIT. I heard when the students around here crave dessert, they're looking for something as innovative as they are. And the inspiration they see can be found just down the block. This bakery is re-educating the classic infection by crafting cupcakes with an attitude. Welcome to Kick <laughs> Cupcakes. Even though I can't say the name, everyone in this neighborhood knows exactly what it means. Once you hear the name of the place, you know they're ready to take it to the next level. Yep. Once you taste it, then you really know they're at the next level. It just tastes like somebody took a cupcake and made it 10 times better. This eclectic cupcake shop is famed not only for their crazy cupcakes, but for transforming them into decadent desserts, like deep fried cupcake sundaes. This funky little shop was started by Sarah Ross. After perfecting her craft as a high-end pastry chef in Los Angeles, she had a cupcake epiphany. I thought Boston needed some cupcake love. So we were the first cupcake bakery. From cookie dough to cocktails. I love the mojito cupcake. Sarah and her brazen team of bakers will try anything on or in their cupcakes, making this kicked up cupcake shop a hit with the neighboring Boston crowd. This is my favorite. This is the green monster, like Fenway Park, dude. A chocolate devil's food homage to Boston baseball. The Green Monster is named after the left field wall at Boston's Fenway Park. It's green, it's huge, it's really scary, and you know what, it deserves its own cupcake. To give the frosting a full-bodied flavor, Allison pours in a sports fan's dream drink. A nice, thick beer. Cream stout in the frosting? Wait, if I was just making a plain buttercream frosting, what liquid would that equate to? Um, I'd probably use a milk or heavy cream. To color the icing, Allison uses a natural spinach dye, then mixes in lots of butter, powdered sugar, and cocoa. Look at that right now, yeah. wow. Before they are frosted, we take a chocolate cupcake, we're gonna punch it out with an apple core, and we're gonna fill it with a beer ganache. Made from heavy cream, chocolate chips, and another round of cream stout. It's a nice, heavy beer, nice bitter taste. To top it off, a generous portion of Green Monster frosting and a sprinkle of cocoa nibs the perfect balance to the sweet frosting. It just adds that extra little bitter bite to it. A lineup of flavors that has Boston fans cheering for more. Awesome, I can taste the beer, the frosting's great, great cupcake. But can this Fenway Park inspired cupcake convert a native New Yorker? You definitely got the flavor of the stout, but because of the sugar, it balances out the bitterness. I hate to admit it, that's a home run. More than 200 different cupcakes are on the menu here like cinnamon chai pecan and amaretto. One of the best sellers is the s'more, made with crushed graham crackers. How do you achieve graham cracker flavor in a cupcake? It's graham flour, a little bit of cake flour, lots of butter. Like any good s'more, the fresh cupcake is topped with a homemade chocolate ganache and a plump marshmallow. Since we don't have a campfire, my next question is, how do we toast the marshmallow in a cupcake shop? Hey, it's the blowtorch. Are we ready to play? Do not try this at home. This is pretty awesome. You don't get to see blowtorches used in bake shops too often. I'm trying to get that good, like, golden brown kind of thing. Ooh, you know? Look at that. It smells like a campfire in here right yes. now. This nostalgic treat turned cupcake brings back delicious memories. Chocolate's oozing out the side. Everything I could imagine a s'mores cupcake could possibly be. And I'm right there with him. I feel like I'm nine years old. It is burnt. <laughs> in the best ways possible. The cake actually tastes like graham cracker. As the action in Sarah's shop heats up, so do the cupcakes, especially when they go into the fryer to create the deep fried cupcake sundae. There is a long history of, of fried desserts, but frying a cupcake is something I have yet to encounter. First, Sarah cores a cupcake made with her own apple cider batter. We're gonna poke a hole in it and put some whipped cream in the center. And then we're gonna put that little piece of cupcake right back in there. Plug it up. Plug it up. After a dip in the batter, the cupcake fries in canola oil at 375 degrees. It almost reminds me of like a funnel cake. Except better. 
the cupcake fries until... Nice and golden brown. And nothing gets a Sunday started like pink whipped cream. Ladle in strawberry and rhubarb sauce. Don't be stingy. Is that fair? That looks good. And this is rhubarb cooked down mixed mm -hmm. with some yeah, it's sugar? Like a, a rhubarb compote. So we'll put just a little bit more whipped cream in there because sure. why not? All right. This is just a crusty, crispy, hot cupcake. All right, right on top. This dessert is Sarah's most decadent. And at this shop, that's saying a lot. It really is like a strawberry rhubarb pie meets funnel cake meets cupcake. Oh my God. God is okay. heaven on earth. It's okay. That's amazing. Can I have a bite? <laughs> there is no denying it. Sarah's cupcakes truly are kicking. Ah, they got the best cupcakes in the world. You're in a college town. We do cupcakes modeled after mojito cocktails. And now the ultimate late night study break, the deep fried cupcake sundae. No wonder Sarah keeps her doors open until 10 p.m. every weekend. I'm ready to go back to college.